Good morning, everybody. Mike Shea. Time for another rule of thumbs. Today, we're going to talk about ice cream stores. Um, believe it or not, there's some subtleties to it, but in any retail store, you want to be conscious of the fixed overhead and the rent. One thing that people don't think about with ice cream is the seasonality, both in terms of time and in the hours of operation. Primarily, sales spike from three, which is post after school, um, into the evening about nine, 10 o'clock. So it's an after dinner or a late evening type business. Um, you'll notice in some of the chains, they are adding services, um, cakes, and then specifically Brewster's, you'll see them doing French fries and quick serve hot dogs and things like that. Um, that is to somewhat increase the sales throughout the rest of the day to offset the cost associated with running them. Um, I've seen really small ice cream parlors do really, really well, like less than 500 feet um, because the sales can be dramatically high. Um, and the fixed overhead dramatically low. Um, stores like Cold Stone sometimes struggle because they have to be in plazas and you know you sacrifice for that volume uh, when you're in locations like that. So the rules of thumb from the business reference guide, 60% um, of annual sales plus the inventory, 2.2 times uh, seller's discretionary earnings plus inventory, three times EBIT, three times EBITDA, or 15 to 20 times uh, weekly sales. I have no idea where that thing comes from. Um, the length of the lease, as we earlier discussed, is a major issue. Um, it's desirable to have property ownership because you can control that cost. It's a simple business, so staffing becomes relatively easy. You can you know, go down to high school students or lower uh, and get it done. Very much driven by location. There's well over 4,000 ice cream locations in the country at the last count. Um, the profit margins around 6 to 10. Again, fixed overhead driven. Revenue per employee runs around $95,000. It's gone up slightly uh, due to the increase in costs. Uh, the average number of employees, most of these guys are part-time, uh, six per establishment. Um, you've seen a trend in yogurt specifically where they've drifted to uh, self-serve, but uh, those are capital intensive. Um, and you'll see a lot of those franchises struggle because you know when you're running on a six to 8% profit margin, um, given 8% to a franchise can be a real challenge. Um, wages run around 16%, again, driven guides by its um, um, short term. And then the, um, the wages themselves uh, can be um, somewhat, um, how do I put this, um, low in the business, but also the automation of the yogurt type dispensary for soft serve has impacted costs on the labor side, uh, to, the to the benefit, by the way. Um, but again, one key indicator here was rent. 15% is the average rent out there on a store. And that is for two reasons, as a percent of sales. One, the seasonality per day, i.e. three to nine, so short sales hours. Uh, and two, you have to be in location to get the volume of foot traffic. So you look at places like Cold Stone, they tend to be in outdoor malls or shopping plazas, things like that. Uh, hence why they struggle. struggle. Um, Market share is kind of dispersed. TCBY with about 14%, Yogurt Land 12, Benchies 12, Red Mango 8, Orange Leaf Frozen, Pink Berry both 7. Um, cost of goods runs around 28. Um, anyways, that's what you need to know about ice cream parlors. They can be profitable. I will tell you that Icy's um, Frozen Ice are more profitable than ice cream. That's why, because it's ice and water's cheap. Uh, relatively speaking, to what you see with um, you know milk-based products. So if you want more on key uh, indicators, subscribe to the U YouTube channel or call me for your specific business, and I'll give you the comps. You can visit me at yourfloridabusinessbroker.com, or my phone is 321-287-0349.